Hopefully she won't know that I'm taking all this stuff. Oh, oh hi. I didn't see you there. I'm uh, taking some things from the house to try out a new tool. You wanna come and join me? You may notice I have a bunch of rounded objects in here because we got a new tool for the laser. Oops, that makes it even easier to do rounded objects, even rounded objects that wouldn't work on a standard rotary, like rings. Let's get to it. And of course we need to start with a little quick unboxing just to see what you can expect to come inside of your package. I really am going to skip a bunch of the setup configurations and calibrations in Lightburn in this video, but I will be releasing a full length version of this as a tutorial for anyone who does end up purchasing this rotary and might want something to follow along with and learn a few tips and tricks along the way. And just so it's clear, this rotary can be used as just a roller rotary as well, just like the original. Now we are going to attempt to transform this into a roller rotary into the chuck style rotary. And there's instructions on how to do this in the pamphlet. So here is a look at different accessories that are included. So you've got these long prongs, you've got these different jaws, and of course you can also use it without those jaws as well. You can just use the jaws that are on here. Depends on what you're working with. I, I really love the versatility of this machine and all the different options you have with it. Okay, so here we have the first attachment on there. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. There it goes. Make sure you take your chuck key out before you start turning. I could engrave Babe Ruth on this baseball or a company logo. That's awesome. My wife told me uh, I'm not allowed, not allowed to engrave this, but she said I could show you how it will hold, how it can hold it. So this is where you would want the smaller jaws because that's too wide for there. Okay, so here you can see we have the jaws with the, with the three different levels and these work perfectly for the smaller lid size here. So I could use the laser to engrave along this rim right here, which is something that we wouldn't be able to do. This is a good use case for the rotary chuck as well. Now I'm really excited to put these prongs on here because I feel like these may be the most versatile and kind of quick because you can put these in by hand without even using the tool, which I really like. So we're gonna get that on there next. With these, you can see they're just like long prongs and you have all these different choices here. So let's say if I was gonna do like a ring, I can just go ahead and put that in the first hole on each one. And you can see how quick you can put those in because again, you don't have to use the tool, so. And you could even use these for this same lid. I was noticing this earlier. Oh, that's out as far as it'll go. And just a good point here, it will stop when it gets to the end. You don't have to worry about it falling apart or the pieces coming out when you either go all the way tight or all the way loose. No big deal. It just kind of stops where it wants to stop. So here I've got one of my old wedding bands, metal. Oh yeah, I see how this is gonna work. Perfect. So I will tighten this down and then once I get it tight enough or close enough together, the ring will slide in. And now, now that the ring is on there, I can loosen. I'm gonna have the outward pressure holding the ring in place. There it is. So there you can see the ring will rotate and the laser head can come down right here and engrave whatever message you wanna put on there. Personalized engraved rings. So that is a game changer right there. That is something that other people are not doing. <laughs> Of course, we have chickens, uh, so we have a lot of extra eggs, so I figured it would be cool to try out to see if I could engrave an egg. Now, instead of unchucking the jaws here, I'm just gonna move the prongs to get into the last hole. I'm gonna make sure to not go too tight on this. That would be awful. Look at that. It's just so cool watching something spin in space like that too. But I mean, you could do your own customized celebration eggs or Easter eggs, family eggs, or all kinds of things. This is awesome. I can't wait to get it powered on. Uh, there's another attachment here. It looks like this is like a center rest. So we could slide this on these front rails here and you can see that will support. And there's this little toggle clamp right here. Righty tighty. And that'll hold that in place. 
So it gives you some extra support if you're working with a material that might need it. And that's on a bearing as well, so it spins super freely. And that will also help you with getting your objects level with one another because that center right there is perfectly centered with the center of the chuck. So that's pretty handy. The instructions also show the fact that you can rotate the chuck in either direction or put it on either side. So I'm just going to show that. It says to engrave objects with handles, you can fit the base plate to the other side. A coffee cup, because if it was on here and it was rolling, the handle would hit the base plate if it was too wide. But with this, you could lift it up and put it on blocks to where the handle would spin freely. That's brilliant. They really did think of everything. So cool, let's go ahead and put it in that position then. That might be the first thing that we try to engrave for real. I really love that essentially every piece of this is all made out of metal. So I'm not afraid that I'm gonna break anything. It all feels really well made and a tool that would last for a very long time. I hope you got to watch X Tools live demonstration on the 13th. I was there watching and it's always really exciting to see that group come on to YouTube and share the technology that they're coming out with. I really love that X Tool just feels like a company that's very transparent with its users. They don't have anything to hide. They're not afraid to show off what they're coming up with. It feels really good to be able to endorse a company like that. And I do want to show you that the weight of the cup is causing the rotary to pick up, grab something with some weight behind it, and put it on the back side there so that you don't have any rocking. And there you can see that is where the handle would hit the floor. Do it on the other side here so you can see it. You see the handle would hit and it wouldn't be able to do a full rotation. Ah, satisfying. I am really excited to see, and this is just again shows how great of a company this is. They provide adapters, different cables, so that you can use this with all the different diode lasers that are out there. That is really generous and it shows that they are a good company because if you think about like apple or john deere they make everything proprietary where it only works with their stuff so even if you don't have the x tool laser system you can use this rotary with whatever setup you have you can see it wants me to plug in a circumference here too so we'll go back to the cup i'm going to take my tape measure and it has metric on one side and imperial on the other i'm just going to go around it and the circumference of this mug is 13 and a quarter so i'll put 13.25 for 13 and a quarter so let's try to do something here So here's how it looks after being washed off. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. And it it's not coming off. I was just scrubbing it with an SOS pad and it's permanent. It's pretty neat. I think it... Whenever I'm cutting or engraving on something that I can't quite remember the speeds, I always go to Xtool's website and you can go to their materials and then they have suggested speeds and powers for different materials. So this takes a lot of the guesswork out of working with a laser and it's probably the most challenging part is learning what speeds and powers to do so it is really helpful that they have done that and shared all those settings with everyone oh it's really good power on light burn i had it running at 15 millimeters a second at full power 100 percent power not bad at all have i mentioned that i'm part of a podcast engraving on some frosted glass merry holidays everyone now here we are engraving that really large mug that I have. This is probably one of my favorite mugs and it's fall themed. So I found an image online that had a lot of detail and I am very pleasantly surprised to see how well that engraving came out on this mug. Look how awesome that came out. Incredible. Next, an engraving on a ceramic mug that I made in college. Now with this video, my intention is to not really do any type of tutorial. I really just want to show you the quality of the product and what it is capable of. But I do plan on releasing another video that will go very in depth on the different techniques, the settings and light burn and how to get everything up and running. So if you are interested in that, be sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you can stay up to date on all the videos that I'll be releasing. 
Next, we'll be engraving the baseball. And yes, I did go get Babe Ruth's signature so that I could put it on this modern day baseball. 100% speed, 50% power. One of the things I really like about diode lasers is how precise you can get that beam if you really have it focused in. This is something I just realized, but you really, once you have it loosened, you can just use your finger to change this much quicker. It's really smooth, it feels good. Yeah, that's a chicken egg. But it smells like chicken poop. It makes sense, because we're burning hair, yeah. It's um, funny, it really just like changes the, the color of the egg to white. It's almost like it's bleaching it. Maybe engraving an orange will smell like citrus. Can you tell what it is? Here we have a plastic cup. I mean, that looks actually really good. It's just really about dialing in your speed. You can also engrave on the inside of rings, but I'm going to save that technique for a dedicated video. I think we're getting something. I see black. That's a good sign. Since this ring is tungsten carbide, I had to use a metal marking spray. And if you want to learn more about that, again, be sure to check out my tutorial video. Oh, this is looking good. Hold on. Swiping it off off screen here. See if I can get the lighting right where I can actually show it. There we go. That's the best way to show it. Now we're going to go for a big one. We've got a 34 inch softball bat and I've got it locked into the chuck on the front side. And then on the back side of the bat or the handle, I've got the height adjuster. Now this tool is so handy because you can use this to get the level of the engraving surface just right. And you can also take that little level that comes in the package. And then once you get that level with your table surface, you'll be able to get a nice, perfectly engraved surface that stays in focus the entire length down it. Now, all of this is just my first day using a Chuck Rotary. And you can see with some of these pieces, the results are coming out really, really good. Now I do want to remind everyone, taking a look at this ring here, yes, engraving on the outside of a ring is quite cool, but engraving on the inside of a ring, that's what I plan on showing you in a future video. So again, if you want to see that, be sure you're subscribed to the channel to check out how you can do that yourself. If you plan on purchasing anything from Xtool, I would greatly appreciate it if you would use the affiliate links in the description below. Any purchases done through that will help support my channel and allow me to produce more videos like this for you. I want to thank my supporters Kyle Hickson and Woodland Iron. Thank you for your continued support. And if you all have any ideas for anything you want to see me do on this channel in the future, be sure to leave a comment. And if you're looking for something else to watch, I encourage you to go check out my channel as I have lots of different content that should keep you busy until the next one.